Are y'all ready? ready? Well, how many people did their homework? Ooh, 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 There's more of you. You know, you know, we're gonna ask. That's why you're doing it yeah. more. Uh, we've been talking. We're talking about my manic marriage, and I think everybody has that. Um, depending on where you're at, you admit it more often than not. Uh, but uh, everybody deals with the ups and downs and the ins and outs of marriage. Uh, days where you're extremely in love and then days where you just want to kill each other. And, uh, you know, everybody has them. And, uh, but we wanted to talk about how to, uh, how to have the, the marriage. I believe God really intended for us to have. And I, I believe when God created marriage, He created it to where you could take two people's lives and put them together and have a life that's beyond what the two whole, the, yeah. I don't know how to say that. Yeah, the sum of the whole. It's greater than the sum of the whole. <laughs> how do you like that? We were talking about that this morning. How, I mean, Christy, I think we're talking about this morning. How funny it is that God puts us with opposites, complete opposites, but that's the two making one big nice right. Marriage. I think, and I think too that in marriage that we really learn what marriage is the greatest teacher of, of how God really interacts with us all through the Bible. God's talking about He talks about His children being uh, in a in a relationship with Him, and He describes it as a marriage relationship as you go through the Old Testament. And and as He as He does, then you see a lot of times that His bride is cheating on Him throughout the Old Testament, and He actually takes it through terms of infidelity of how His people are cheating on Him. And, and so I think in marriage we can start to to see how much God cares for us and what He actually uh, does for us and sacrifices for us and and gives for us. And and because we talked about last week that you know marriage is a lot of well sacrifice, right? Love is what? Sacrifice. sacrifice. Love is sacrifice. And so marriage is, is giving yourself up to meet your spouse's needs. Now, we've been talking about these needs that every, that every human being has, right? And, and in going through those needs, last week we talked about how your job is not to know your needs and have your needs met, but to know your spouse's needs and meet those needs. And if you do that, that's called love, right? Right? When you're, you feel, you actually feel love. And people who feel love don't separate. People who don't experience love end up separating. And so what we're trying to do here is just help you make your marriage the most you can make out of it. Now today, in the next three weeks, today in the next two weeks, I guess, we're going to talk about the three things that we've experienced since we've been in ministry that that destroy marriages. And we're going to talk today about finances. More people get divorced over money probably than really any other thing that we've come to. Um, and a lot, of you, a lot of people say, no, it's not, it's sex. Well, uh, I'll, I'll make the argument that money leads, uh, well, I've told you all this, I think everything's about sex. So, so uh, I think everything comes down to sex, but I think money issues and the stress that money puts on a marriage causes the, the, the marriage bed to fail and it ultimately causes breakups. And uh, I think money is a huge one. The second one I see more than anything else is, is health issues. And when I say health issues, I'm talking about addictions, physical health issues, and un unaddressed mental health issues. Now, a lot of you guys are going, well, I know she's crazy. So we need to address that. No, nobody's saying that? Oh, I bet there are. All you ladies, close your eyes. All you guys, raise your hands. No, don't do that. Don't be dumb. No, there's some things you just don't raise your hand for in here, so just remember that. But uh, then the, the third thing that I've seen absolutely destroy marriage is sex. And... Uh, Sex seems to, whenever I, whenever I meet with couples or, or hear stories, man, it always comes down to sex. And, and, uh, and, and a lot of people say, well, that's just, you know, you're, you're just being whatever. Well, 
so what? It, it's the truth. So this is a marriage series based on reality, okay? Not based on good ideas and good things that sound good, you know, politically correct. But, but these are based on reality. And so sex destroys marriages and uh, or the lack of it. <laughs> so uh, yeah, God created or it. with the wrong people. <laughs> So, uh, yeah. anyway, God did create it, so it is a, it, it's created by him, and it's only for the marriage bed, so it's very, very important. So we're going to dedicate a whole, a whole Sunday to that in, in three weeks, third week from now. So, uh, you know, that's going to be extremely straightforward, and not, we're going to talk about sex, and that's it. So, uh, and uh, today we're going to talk about money, and that's it, so... Now, uh, we talked about love languages or love needs and, and felt needs. And, and one of Celia's felt needs is financial security. And for, for if, you're, if your makeup is not that, if your biggest need in your marriage or in your relationships is not financial security, you would look at that and go, well, that's just dumb or that just, you know, that's uh, materialistic or whatever. Well... The thing is, if that's your need, and, and more of you guys have that than you are addressing, because if you have that need, money is a big issue with you. I think, well, what we realize, and I don't know if you, the ones that have done their homework, what you may realize, like, we actually meet each other's needs really well. I mean, we've been married for a while. Wow. How long? Whew. 22 years. 21? 21, 21, almost 22, yeah. Um, and when we Feels were taking like eternity, twelve. No, when we were taking that test, um, we thought, "Yo, that that needs not a big deal or whatever." And we're like, "Yeah, that that one's not a big deal, or this one's not a big deal." But what we realized is, it's because it's met, like a lot. So we're we don't think that that's one of our big needs. So what we had to do is back up and say, "Okay, what if you didn't meet that need? Would that be a make it or break it situation for us?" So we had to kind of back up a little bit and, and yeah, go through it backwards. It's a lot harder. And if you're in a good marriage, what we're trying to do is make your marriage better. So we want you to, to discover things that will take a good marriage and make it into a great marriage. And so that's what we were looking at is like, why are, you know, what would it be like if, you know, if I didn't meet your financial uh, security need and... And what it would look like, you know, it would be disastrous. It would, it would be a total neglect, a hate. Like, he don't care about me, don't love me. And, and we've been through those times where I just did whatever I wanted to do with money because I'm kind of irresponsible with money. And she's not. So, it, and it caused some serious problems. Now, the problems it caused, we would have said, oh, we're having problems with sex or we're having problems with with these other things, but they were just issues because these things weren't being met. And, and that's the way it rolls. And I realized, I think I already said this one week, I realized when you go back and, and think, okay, why did I fall in love with him? What made me fall in love with him? What made me say I do when he asked me to marry him? Well, he was... Isn't um, it obvious? He was, quit, a Marine. So I knew... That's financial security. Unless she went he does for something. a man in uniform. Yes, that's what it was. <laughs> Unless he did something really bad to get kicked out, he was going to have a job, you know, and he was going to have training to get a job in the future. So I knew that. I mean, we didn't think about that back then. I didn't think about it. But now I'm like, that's, that was a big deal. Yeah. And he gave me a necklace. That was another big deal. He, gave me, he took it back, though. But anyway, that's a long story. That's a we'll, longer we'll story. Go into that. But no. you just shot at me and then okay. called it quits. Let's don't go there. Let's don't go there. Anyway. Okay. Bygones. Bygones. That's right. We say that in our marriage a lot. <laughs> don't bring it up anymore. Yeah. So here's the thing about money. Um, everybody needs it. To what level you need it, you need to figure that out. But the thing is, every single person needs it. There's somebody in your relationship, and if it's not you, then it's your spouse. Somebody in every relationship needs financial security. You, God puts people together so we'll take care of each other, so we will we'll come together as one where we can be whole and, and, uh, 
And what I see all the time is that money problems cause stress. Is that true? How hard is it to stay in love when you're dealing with all kinds of financial issues? How many of you guys have ever been through a, a job loss in your marriage? Stressful in your marriage, isn't it? Yes. It's extremely stressful. Even, even though you're walking with God, I mean, you could be walking with God and be like all holy and everything, but still it doesn't matter. There's still stress that's introduced when you, when you come into that. How many of you guys have hit a place where you have like a, a, a health crisis that, that just kills you financially or... or, or um, you know, a, a reduction in pay or, or, or um, you know, you go from two incomes to one. You go through, through whatever in your life and, and you, you get to where you go from, from two incomes to one income. And, and, and it doesn't seem like a big deal. But when you go from making, say, $1,000 a week to 500 a week, that's a big deal. I mean, that's half. And so your standard of living and the way you respond has to change. Now... Here, here's some things that are true in marriage, okay? And, and really, guys, in life, it's true. You have to make a living. I, I mean, the bottom line is, I mean, this is, this is, this is about as honest as I can be. You have to make a living. Somebody in the family's got to make a living, right? I mean, when it comes down to it, somebody's got to make a living. And, and it, it requires you to... If you don't, it's going to destroy eventually your marriage. Now, you may have a low standard of living. You may say, well, we have everything we need, basically, and we live on very little. Well, a little is still something, is it not? It takes money to live. I mean, it takes money to drive a car. You've got to have gas. You've got to have insurance. You've got to, you know, you got to have maintenance. Even if you've got a paid-off car, you've still got stuff to take care of. So it takes money to, to be mobile. It takes, anybody has been to the grocery store lately? It takes money to eat. And I don't care if you eat at home. Maybe you're the most disciplined person in the world and you eat at home every meal. Well, that is is. It costs. I mean, it's still not free to eat at home. The days of growing your own food and, and killing your own cows, man, those days aren't here anymore, right? I mean, you may have a garden, but you don't have enough to make it all year. I mean, some of you guys are going to go, no, I do. And I'm like, well, good, man. Then you got money going in somewhere else. You're paying for fertilizer or something. I don't know. The thing is, we all need money. And to what level you need money, you are going to have to figure that out. The, the problem you get into in relationships is if one person is totally fine and the other one has this deep need for financial security that may not even be a known need, that the person who's irresponsible starts to cause strain on the relationship because the other one's wondering how we're going to pay this bill and how we're going to eat. And... I'm not okay with staying at home all the time and never getting to go out to eat. And I'm not okay with not being able to buy shoes for my kids. And I'm not okay with, with the basic needs of life. Let's face it, man. Sometimes life just beats you down. You want to buy something. I mean, there's, it's not a sin. Okay. I mean, you may have been in church and they say that's sin, but that's not a sin. Sometimes you just need something new, right? I mean, in reality, and we're, we're talking about real world, not, you know, holy world. But in real world, sometimes you just need to buy something. Sometimes you just need to go out and eat. And, and if, if, you know, here's, here's the problem with the way these things work. If one of yours is like domestic support and one of yours is, is finances, well, then they start to work against each other because you're like, Man, if I cook, then the dishes are going to be all over the place. The house is going to be destroyed. It's going to smell like grease because we're in Texas and you're going to cook. It's going to be greasy, right? And so, so when it happens, then you're, you're really double dipping into a negative area. It's like, I, I just want to go out and eat. I want to go have a meal out. So you have to communicate. I, I mean, I think communication is what's key in all of it but you ha you're going to have to communicate okay here's what I really need I need to be able to go out and eat at least once a week 
I need to, I want to go out and eat on Saturday. I want to be able to have date night, which we're going to talk about in a few weeks. I, I want a date night. And I don't want a date night where you take a picnic basket and go park in the pasture and get ate up by ants and mosquitoes and everything else. I want a date night where we actually go somewhere, sit down, have a meal without kids hanging on me and with somebody waiting on me where I don't have to take my own tray off the table. Okay, a real date. I want those things. If those are things you really want, then you're going to have to sit down and say, okay, here's what it is. And this is the dirty word of marriage, budget. We're going to have to come up with a budget. This is going to have a cost attached to it. So you need to sit down and figure out how much this stuff costs, right? Then you're going to have to say, well, if I'm going to, if I'm going to be able to do all of these things that I want to do, provide, pay all the bills, provide the adequate shelter, adequate clothing, keep my kids in, in shoes, keep food on the table, and add these extra little things, then this is how much income we're going to need in this house. All right. You need to know that. You need to know in your marriage how much income you need. You also need to know in your marriage how much income you have. Because if you have enough, then you need to figure out where it's all going, right? If you don't have enough, then you need to figure out what you do to have enough. I know it makes sense, but we don't do it. We don't sit down and do this. Okay, so you need to figure that out. The next thing you need to do is figure out what you need to do to get to where you want to be. Right? Part of being, part of having financial security as a love need is not about what you have right now, but about communicating the plan to get to where you want to be. It's not that you're in debt, it's that you have a plan to get out of debt, right? I mean, you can ask Celia these things. These are, it, it wasn't that, that I had everything I need or, or got out of debt. It was that I said, look, what are our bills? Because I didn't know and I frankly didn't care. Because the one that has that need usually runs the budget. They're yeah. usually the one doing that. <laughs> yeah, because they don't. They're like, I've I seen make you. make sure. Yeah. yeah, then we got enough. <laughs> so what, what happens then is she says, okay, um, we got this much debt and I say okay well here's what we can do I sit down with her we discuss we come up we communicate this is our plan this is how we're gonna have more money now she decides that she's gonna get another job because we want to do certain things and we and then we weigh out because one of my things is I want somebody to spend time with me like so we have to find a balance there between her financial security and, and my need for time, you know, quality time. And so if she's spending all of her time working and I'm, you know, by myself, then it don't matter how much money we have because we're, we just flip flopped and rolled. So we sit down and discuss, okay, here's the balance. We can, I can do this and you can do that and, and we'll come up here. Uh, we, we talk about our bills and what we can do to reduce bills. Now, this is a good thing. I'm in church, so I want to help you. There are things you can do today. You can go home today and find more money in most of your homes. Not all of them, but in most of them. In most of your homes, you could reduce the number of channels you have on TV and find 40 bucks a month. That's a date night. In most of your homes, you could go home this afternoon and get on the internet and shop for insurance and drop your insurance by $100 a month. How many of you guys have done that? We had the same insurance company for like 15 years. And I won't say who it is because it was State Farm. We still have some insurance with them too. We just got online one day and I said, well, man, this, this is stupid how much we're paying. Because I, I didn't look at the money sheet. I just, I didn't look. Come home, man, I get on the internet because I can shop for anything on the internet, right? I go stop for insurance. Man, we save like a hundred, over a hundred dollars a month until my daughter got her license. Same and thing with if you have a kid insurance. turning sixteen, just kill them, save you a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> but but that's one thing you can do. Your home insurance. There are companies that will provide. Take your declaration page of your home insurance. 
and get the exact same policy. Don't compare, compare exact same policies. Look for one that's a reputable company. Our house insurance went to half. Literally, it went from $1,800 a year to $900 a year for an identical declarations page. Identical. So what I'm saying is you can go home this afternoon, look through where your money's going and say, how can we cut this? How can we reduce this? We did a budget one time. We were both working in Dallas. It was horrible. You know, we had no time. We, we left before the sun came up, got home way after the sun came down. Both of us working. Kid Justice was in daycare. She was little. And we were like, we are spending 100 plus at that time dollars a week at Walmart and eating out every meal. So we just made a budget said, we're not going to Walmart anymore. We're just going to eat out every meal. And we budgeted that way. And it actually saved us money. Now, when things changed and we started eating at home and we got overweight and outgrew all our clothes. And had a heart attack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was a long time ago. The thing is, the thing is, you, ha you can find places in your budget. If you find out, um, here's something I did for her because I went to, I ate out breakfast every day because there is nothing in this world I hate worse than getting up and cooking breakfast. And if you've noticed, there's nothing you can just grab and eat that's not sweet. Well, if I eat sugar in the morning, I crash out, and I'm very bad to live with the rest of the day. Ask anybody. So I used to go out and eat every day, and it was like over five bucks every morning, something like that. And so I don't eat out breakfast anymore. Every morning I get up and I make, I throw an egg on a pan and I throw a piece of toast in the toaster and I choke down breakfast and it gets me through. Okay, it's not the greatest meal of the day, but it works. The thing is, it saves us $25 a week, right? You know how much that is a month? Math whizzes. It's $100 a month, right? If I don't go eat breakfast every day, I'm giving her an extra $100 a month into our money that is ours, not for me then not to eat. Or maybe you can take your lunch one day a week or whatever. And the thing is, you can go home and you can find money. You can find ways anywhere. I know, ladies, you know the little face wash pads that you wash your face with? I use one side one day, put it back in there, and use the other side the next day. I'm really bad, I know. <laughs> That's my need. <laughs> I use razor blades till they scrape the skin off. <laughs> Those things are expensive. Their razor blades oh, are stupid my. expensive. It so, is. but the, the the thing is, you Brian can Baker find. Just grow a beard. Yeah, just grow a beard. Just quit shaving. Quit yeah. doing it all. Just go with it. <laughs> the the thing is, there are ways you can do. You can cut and make get your financial situation better. But no matter how much you cut, guys, you're still gonna have to communicate. Here's what we need. Now, let me tell you this, and I, I would like if you would write this down. I read this in a book years ago. It's one of the greatest things I've ever learned, and I've said it as kind of a guide and principle in my life. And, and if you'll write this down and you'll stick to it, what it'll be, it's for making any decision you're going to make. But when you apply it to your finances, it really is helpful. It came from a book Andy Stanley wrote called The Best Question Ever. And the, and the, the, the idea, the basic idea of the book is this. When you go to make a decision, you need to look at your past decisions and the outcome of them, your current circumstances, and your future hopes and dreams. And then you need to ask, what is the wise thing to do? Given my past, my present, and my future hopes and dreams, what is the wise thing to do? And if we start to filter that, then you start to be able to make better decisions and put better plans in paper. Maybe, maybe you go with the stripped down model of the car that you're looking at, or maybe you go with a gas mileage because nowadays you, can, you may say, wow, I can get this car for this much money. What a deal until you have to put $100 a week in gas, right? Because the thing gets eight to 10 miles to a gallon. Like for instance, it sounds like it'd make a lot of sense to go drive like a 1980 Chevrolet truck. Well, I drove one for years. I know that you're gonna get four to six miles to a gallon, <laughs> all right? Now, if I drove from my house to town and back 
five times a week, I'm going to spend more in gas than I would spend on an economy car payment. Okay, you have to be smart. You have to consider all of the things. You have to consider insurance when you're looking at a car. You have to consider mileage. You have to consider total cost of everything. So we make wise decisions. Now you say, okay, I'm willing to put more gas in to drive this car. Okay, but then I can get this for that. And so you figure out how much it's going to cost. But it comes down to knowing your budget, knowing how much money you're going to need to make. Maybe you have to get another job to drive or put gas in the car or whatever. So you have to do that. The thing is, if we don't make these decisions, then it's going to hurt our marriage because the very first thing that's going to happen if, if the person in your marriage who has that need for financial security, if that gets ripped out from under them, then the next thing to go is your primary need because I guarantee you that it's not going to be on purpose. It's going to be a, a panic shutdown. Does that make sense? Have you guys have you guys have experienced financial stress and seen how it affects how on edge you are? Like when you're financially stressed, your kids irritate the crap out of you, right? And you're just angry. Well, when you're financially secure and everything's going and everybody's working on this, then you're then you're a lot more at ease. And it's a, it's like that whether it's in sex or whether it's in quality time or whether it's in whatever you're doing. Imagine your your need being um, quality time or romantic or what do they call that? Affection. Yeah, like you need a, a date and flowers and. And whatever to, to know our gift or whatever to know your love but you don't have the money to do that well you just took I mean you just took away saying I love you because you don't have the finances to do it and it starts to really break apart our marriages and guys I don't mean like I mean destroy hate each other come into my office and, and cuss each other destroyed marriages and, and I don't want that for you. So here's what I want you to do. And I, and I don't want to take your whole day up because I think, I think we've, we, we get the idea, right? What I want you to do is I need you to go home and I need you to sit down with your spouse and I need you to say, what do we need to do? What is our plan? Because someone with a financial security need, a plan works just as good as having money, a stuck to plan. Yeah, if we're both <laughs> on the same page and we're working towards something, I can hang with whatever. I know something that we realized that was like a love buster through this, and um, we just realized it, you know, a couple of weeks ago or so, but um, because I had taken, well, a long time ago, probably four, four or five years ago, finances were tight, and so I took a second job four or five years ago. Well, I ended up falling in love with the job, and then finances got okay. Well, I kept working. Well, how many of you know that when you work and you have this certain money, no matter what you do, you get more money, you spend it. You spend it. No matter what, you still spend what you make. So then we get back into the situation where we're spending what we're making. And so I feel like, oh, I, don't, I can't ever go without this job. And I freak out because that's my need. Well, then I have him over there saying, oh, you don't even need that job. We'll be just fine without it. Well, then that upset me because I'm like, you don't even appreciate the fact that I'm working till nine o'clock every night and you know so that became a love buster we didn't even realize it and then you know now of course he he really does appreciate the fact that I do it but um, it didn't come across that way to me so you can understand how that how that works and then it becomes really mad you know if that's your need yeah, and way and way we got around get around that is as I tell her if we can cut anything. We have a lot of areas we can cut. Yeah. A lot of things we're doing aren't we aren't tied to. We can cut any time. So anytime she doesn't want to work anymore, then that's then we're not gonna struggle because we haven't got in this have to tied down long term commitment thing and and you know, financial commitment. So so uh that's how discussion and getting through that, you know. Well, and I realized I needed to meet more of his needs so he didn't feel neglected because I am out late every night and he's home by himself. <laughs> I have a lot which of alone time. A lot of, yeah. Which is not good for me because I get he depressed. He likes quality time. And I get crazy. 
and you know things happen <laughs> I buy stuff on the internet yeah <laughs> I start shopping <laughs> at home cycle. yeah, yeah. Guitar but center communication. online. Communication is Stupid the key. deal of the day. <laughs> it all starts to come in. Okay. Come back. All right. So here's what you need to do. You need to go home. You need to sit down. You need to discuss, okay, here's where we're at. And guys, you have to be honest. If, if you're living in a place you don't like living, if you're, if you're eating out or cooking having to eat meals at home when you want to eat out. Say you want to eat out three times a week, four times a week, five times a week. Say you want to eat lunch out. I told her, I, I want to eat lunch out every day. That's one of my deals. I just want to eat lunch out. I'll go home and cook at night because I don't care. I got time, but I want to eat lunch out because I want to stop during the day and be served. That's what I want to do. So she knows that. I communicate that. Now, is that a have to have? No, we can cut things, but communicating that, then we, she knows how important that is to me. The thing is, you go home, you sit down. This isn't the house. I, I don't like this house. I don't like it. No, don't go home and say, I don't like this house. I don't like this car. I don't like these kids. I don't like you. <laughs> That's not going to be good, all right? But go home and figure out, okay, here's where we're at. This isn't where I want to be. Here's what we need to do to get past this. Now, here's our plan. In a year, I want to be able to move. So, or I want to be able to get a car. I want to be able to do this or, or even, you know, next month. I'm willing to cut this and take that or whatever. You got to be willing. I'm willing Sometimes, to go get a job. Yeah, there's seasons for everything. Sometimes yeah. you just got to work through a season. Yeah, I, I, we've had a, a lot of times where... There was a season when we started the church and I went from making a lot of money. I was a computer network engineer. I was making a good living to making absolutely zero. And I mean zero like there was no check. And so I took a job at a parts store. Now, the reason that worked and that worked fine is because I was making seven bucks an hour working like 60 hours a week. And it was fine because I knew it wasn't what I was going to be doing forever. There was a goal. There was other things going on. She was working at a law office and hated it because it, working at a law office in a small town, you know everybody's stuff and it's the bad stuff. And it's, so if you, don't, you don't really want to know everything you know. And then being a pastor on top of that, you know more than you want to know. And people just feel obligated to tell you things you wish they wouldn't. And so you find out all the stuff. And so she, but she stuck on that job. So we were able to make it because we had this plan and these goals. So say you're in this situation. Say, well, I'm going to take this job or we're going to do this for this is going to be temporary. Or maybe it's not that. Maybe you're doing what you're doing and there's no potential in that. Maybe you're not even happy on your job. And being happy on your job is a huge part of your marriage. Hating your job, you spend more time there than you do with your spouse. And hating your job is a drag, right? So decide what you're going to do to make the change. And then whether it's maybe you have to go to college. Maybe you have to go to school. Maybe you have to go do an internship. Maybe you, have to, maybe you have to get training. Maybe you have to start as an apprentice and you're gonna have to work four years to go through this thing. Let me tell you something, four years, the older I get, four years passes quick, right? So if, if, if you wanna make the change, then you need to start today. You need to sit down, you need to come up with a plan and say, I need a job that makes this much money, okay? Well, maybe you need to go to school to get a degree to do that job. Well, get started. Figure out how you're going to do this. Don't come and tell me I'm stuck. It's hopeless. Nothing is hopeless. This is America. You're not stuck. You're not stuck. You can do anything you want to do. But anything you want to do is going to require you to make a huge effort and put forth a lot of work to do it. The, 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 the greater things in life are going to take more work. It's true. The higher paying jobs, you have to go to college longer. You have to do, you have to do more training. You have to go through harder things. Some of the higher paying manual labor jobs are because the work's hard. Right? The work is hard, but the pay is good. You want to do something easy? Great. It's not going to pay you anything. But if you're okay with that, then do something easy. 
But just decide what it is you need together and go do that. It may be that you've been a stay-at-home mom and, and, and your kids are starting school. Maybe it's time to get a job. Maybe you can relieve some of the stress in your marriage by contributing. You're like, well, the best job I can get is only going to be $120 a week. Math, somebody. 480 a month. Do you need $480 this month? I could use it, right? It's going to help. It's going to take the relief off your husband who may hate his job. And then he's going to be in a better mood. You're going to be in a better mood. Everything's going to be happy. The marriage is going to be happier. Do you see how it works? It takes work and it takes commitment. It takes a plan and it takes, it takes a, a, a initiative and drive and passion to, to want more out of life. Or to even want a better marriage. You have to work at it. I keep telling y'all this every week. Marriage is not easy. Marriage isn't easy. You have to work at it. But you're going to have to get your finances in order for your marriage to be healthy. That don't mean you got to be out of debt. That don't mean you got to be making a million dollars. What it means is you have to get your finances in order. That's satisfactory to both of you. And then your marriage can thrive. And guess what? Next year, everything's going to change. It's all going to change. Because your kids are going to be older. Your life circumstances are going to be changed. Obama's going to help you out. You're going to be hooked up. And so, like, I mean, things are going to change. So you may have to meet. You're going to have to do this all the time. You're going to have to have open financial conversations. And if you're one of those people who get mad and frustrated when you feel like your back's against the wall, you're going to need to take a deep breath. And you're going to have to say, we've got to talk this out in a civil way without getting heated and without getting angry because most of the fights we've ever had in our marriage were over finances. I mean, really, like yelling, shut down, go to your room, fights. Were, they were over money. And I think people just just have, get real heated in money areas. So, so you're going to have to have these conversations ongoing because everything's going to be changing all the time. Does that help? All right, let me pray for you.